Welcome to this marvelous new instructive video. So, no time to diddle daddy, let's not bother with any kind of intro or anything, and just get right to the point. Well, first, quick disclaimer, these are all my personal opinions and my experiences that I've had over the past few years of being an artist. Of course, I did do some research, but most of it is just my own opinions and uh, little tips and tricks and hacks and stuff, so if you disagree, completely fine. Now, with that out of the way, let's get on to hack number one. So, this is more so a mistake you can make than an actual hack, but it's still something that will improve your art skills overall. So it still works with the narrative of the video. Anyways, hack one. Don't let your drawing tablet become a creative crutch. And what I mean by that is, don't let yourself be snared by how much easier it is to use a digital device, how much more efficient it is, how many more options or tools there are at your disposal. When you make the transfer from traditional to digital, down the line you can find yourself in a similar moment that I had. When I suddenly came to the sudden realization that I hadn't drawn something with a paper and a pencil in months. When I finally sat down with a sketch pad pencil and started to draw, I sucked. And not only that, but there came a couple points where I made a mistake. And as dumb as it sounds, I actually had half a thought enter my brain to just hit the back button and undo my mistake. And the realization that I actually had to physically flip my pencil around and erase the line was jarring. So after that, I made sure to never let anything like that ever happen again. And surprisingly enough, I found that practicing drawing on a paper every now and then started improving my skills on a tablet. So this is a little hack I'm giving you now. Make sure to always practice from time to time with a good old fashioned paper and pencil. You'll thank me for it. Hack number two. So this is more so an actual hack. Let's say there's this particular artwork you're a big fan of and really want to create something like it, aka fan art. Well, you start trying to just reference it and you get most of the first sketch done, but the pose of the character or maybe some small detail eludes you and you just can't seem to get it right. It drives you crazy. Well then, a very easy and obvious solution is to trace the outline of the pose or the small detail. Wait, what? Sith, you can't do that. That's bad. Tracing is bad. That's stealing other people's art. It's illegal. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, random toxic commenter, but fan art, no matter how you make it, whether it be referencing, tracing, or so-called from pure imagination, is illegal. But not only that, but actually just drawing fan art and posting it on social media is not illegal. It only ever becomes illegal unless you're making any kind of money or clout off of it. Which people do all the time, by the way. Anyways, the moral of the story is, if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to make some cool fan art of some kind, or just drawing in general, it's okay to trace something from another drawing. Just make sure you're never copying too much of the drawing or even the entirety of it. Because, at that point, what would even be the purpose of drawing it anymore? Might as well just copy and paste the darn thing and just say, Hey, I drew this totally a 100% original piece of artwork right here. That is mine, and not stolen from another artist. Also, I suggest when tracing something to do more of a quick sketch-like trace. Because again, you don't want to be just copying and pasting stuff. You want room to be able to still be stylized and alter things of your own accord. And of course, if you're posting it on any kind of social media or DeviantArt kind of website, always make sure to give credit to the original artist. Hack number three. So this hack is a very simple one. For all those who find drawing their own original character a daunting or perplexing task and are stuck in the idea stage, well here's something you can stop doing and start doing right now like at this very moment even, that will drastically speed up and improve the process. And that is, stop thinking about the character and just draw it already. Really, stop thinking about it. Grab a paper and pencil or your graphic tablet right now and just start drawing the character. Even if you don't really know what you're even drawing yet, it doesn't matter. The best way to figure something out or solve a problem is through trial and error. Same thing applies to art and character design. Yes, your first sketch is probably going to suck and not be anything like you imagine it, but that's the whole point. 
By experimenting with different doodles and sketches, you can slowly start to build your way to the final product by figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And before you know it, you'll have your dream OC you always wanted. Hack number four. When one is but a beginner artist and even somewhat a intermediate one, always reference other professional artists and stuff in real life. Because the hard truth of it is, drawing from imagination is bad and can result in you getting a lot of things very wrong, especially with human anatomy. The human mind can be a very muggy, messy thing and has a knack for making things up to fill in the blanks of our easily forgetful memories. So unless you have photographic memory, then I suggest considering following this step. Hack number five. So this is a bit of an unusual one, but have you ever seen those fancy posable model figures that people use for referencing? I see ads for them all the time, and yes, they are a very helpful little tool to have, but um, then again, like all fancy gizmos, they're ridiculously overpriced. Like, come on, I'm not about to pay this for some faceless gray action figures. Which brings us to the hack. Action figures. You can literally do the same exact thing with just regular action figures and some cheap modeling clay. You can get all these neat, simple little posable figures at just your local dollar store. Heck, you can get over a dozen different posable action figures for the same price you would for just one of those fancy model figures. And using just some simple clay, you can make any kind of action, pose, or position you could possibly want. Well, all right then. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to see more content similar to this, just let me know by giving that good old like button a nice smash. And of course, by commenting down below that you liked the video. And until next time, everyone, Sith Art Master, out.